mukama yeba zibwe tweba za katonda olwe kisachi ekitajulu kokawano tuyimiride katonda abadde mulungi yatuwawo era tumugulumiza njagalo kutegeza anti mu bisera bine bya covid katonda yali mulungi nnyo etake lili mabega wa fejola ba eyo lye taka katonda lye yatuwa na atuongera ku kanisa mu bisera bine bya covid ne tubawa olunako olokusa sule etake lyo enaku zo mwezi nga asatu mulu mu July tujja kubange etake lyo tulisasula sibwe dito bwe lyali ne twatwa le dale lyo kukiriza ne tulongo se chifo ne tukole ebidiba byonanga tubikola lwa kukiriza kati nako asatu mulu mu July tute ko kubanga tuba wadde e million 25 okusobola kumweze etake lyo nge etake lye kanisa na yenzi kiriza na buluganda banobo naba kiriza Yes. Tetake elio tulitute mulinya elia yes. mkama wafe Yesu yes. Era, era kwe alieyo Tuku gamba Kole chisoboka Uli sadaka yunene kole kwe jakole nja ulo Owe chikumi, owolu kumi, awaka kade, owobu kade Na yekili za katonda osigen siko kubanga chikuwe tagisa Oyinzo kukubile simu, oyinzo kukubile office, oyinzo kujia kuchachi No yimia na fe kusongeno Kweta gamili yone habili motano, enakuzo mwezi, nga asatu murumu. Etaka lino, fako lenda gano. Nenga tulieva liza katonda. Wawe rao eka nambe mabega wano, awali evidiva. Tukoze, echisovoka, tutademu, okukiriza. Eda tuli wano, ngevi andiko evi gamba, nti omutukuvu, abamu lamu wakola kutia, wakukiriza. Nti nga asatu murumu, omwezi guno guta andiko gwa July. Tujia kusobola okugula etaka lino. Nebe la chitundu kutaka lino. Waye nsigoyo. Leto urukumi. Leta kakade. Mulinya liyamu kama hafe yesu. Omusumba kaziwe. Bako chotu gamba. Tuba zamu kama tu kilizanti etaka liyamu. Ketudu tutu roko kiliza. Mimilu wa muna hafe mkama bawomu. Aburu ganda mugamba mutia. Leta katuli tuwala. Mulinya liyachi. Mulinya liyesu. Elanga asatu mulu mujula chechi gendo kubao. Tuwala. Nifukeri ya kanisa. Yes. Amina. Weba le nyo. Okuta. Jojo gambo tia. Ya kanisa. Ya kanisa. Nitute. Avolugada mugamba mutia. Avolugada miso voko gambo tia. Tuwari tuwala daza waizi. Chevaliza mukama. Chevaliza mukama. Uboi na dola. Uboi na pound. Uboi na euro. Uboi na doki mandi. Zona zire. Zona zire. Yenga mukama ya litu wada. Uyevaliza mukama. Amina. you are awesome we thank you for your holy spirit that never leaves us that is the best friend that we ever be that we ever have oh god we worship you we magnify your name oh god ancient of days we magnify you we give you praise we give you honor there is none like you there is none awesome like you are oh god you are the beginning and the end you are the awesome ruler god you are the ancient of days we magnify you jesus we lift your name on high, we sing holy, holy is the Lamb of God who was and is and is to come. <laughs> Father, we worship your name, oh God, we give you glory. We give you honor, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. You are holy. The great I am, hallelujah, hallelujah, we serve the mighty God, the great I am.
mighty God. He is strong in battle. He is mighty in power. We thank you for the miracles that are taking place in the lives of your people. And we bless and honor and glorify you. And we thank you for your blood. And we thank you for your name. And in the name of Jesus. Now release grace and release anointing upon all of us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 And amen. If you are in your sitting room, I just want you to raise those hands to the Lord. Make this declaration in the song.
that as I leave, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow. Every knee shall bow. At the throne of judgment. Every tongue will acknowledge that Jesus is Lord. Amen and amen and amen. amen Thank amen. you so much for worship team. God richly and graciously bless you. In Jesus' name. Well, once again, we welcome each and every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And we thank God for you. And we thank God so much that you are still standing by faith. That you are still waiting upon God by faith. That you are still trusting God by faith. And I know the faith you have in God will see you through in the name of of Jesus. You know, when you're in the book of Luke chapter 22, from verse 31 to 32, Jesus looked at Peter and said these words. And said, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith faileth not. And those same words are true with us today. We know that the enemy is all around the world. Shaking everything and anything that can be shaken. But we are praying and Jesus is praying and the Holy Spirit is praying through us. That our faith is so strong that whether in life or in death we shall stand strong still confessing and declaring that Jesus is Lord of our lives. Because when we believed in Jesus we believed Jesus in life we also believed Jesus in death we also believed in Jesus in resurrection and so whether it is life or it is death or resurrection you ask Jesus is Lord and our faith is strong and strengthened each and every single day Amen and amen, amen and amen Today I want us to talk about how to cultivate a strong faith how you can cultivate a strong faith. There are two people in the scripture that Jesus commended their faith. There are two people in scripture that Jesus commended their faith. One was a Roman centurion. And when he exhibited faith in the words of Jesus. Jesus looked at his disciples and said, I have never found so great faith in 
the entire nation of Israel. And there's also another woman, she was a Gentile. She came to Jesus and pleaded with Jesus to help and heal a daughter. And Jesus kept quiet for a while. And eventually Jesus said, well, I cannot take the children's bread and give it to pigs. And then the woman said, Lord, I know. No, he said dogs, not pigs. Dogs. And then the woman says, Lord, I know. But the dogs also eat of the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And Jesus commended our faith. He said, woman, great is thy faith. Let it be done to you according to what you want me to do for you. And so we want to talk about that great faith, how you can cultivate from the level of just having faith to a level of having what Jesus would call a great faith. Now, in Peter's case, when he got out of the boat, the Bible tells us that he walked for a while. And then he moved his eyes from Jesus. And then he looked at the wind and the storm. And then he began to sink. And he cried out to Jesus and said, Lord, save me. And then Jesus reached out his hand and lifted Peter out of the water. And then Jesus said these words to Peter. O ye of little faith, why did you doubt? So he commends Peter's faith. But he says it was a small faith that made him to walk out of the boat. Can you imagine if you have a great faith? You cannot only come out of the boat, but I can see you flying in life. I can see you doing greater things than coming out of the boat and walking on top of the water. And so we'd like to talk about how you can develop such a great faith from no faith to faith to small faith and great faith. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the book of Luke chapter 8. The book of Luke chapter 8. And we are reading from verses 48. Luke chapter 8 verses 48. And he said unto her they are talking about Jesus Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made you whole. Go in peace. Daughter, thy faith has made you whole. Daughter, listen to those words. Your faith, not my faith, but your faith in me has made you whole. Which means the healing was present for each and every one of them. But they didn't exercise their faith so that the healing power of Jesus can touch them and deliver them and set them free. Listen to these words again. Daughter, your faith, your 
faith has made you whole. Don't wait for me. Don't wait for the right moment. Your faith can create the moment. Your faith can bring the miracle. Your faith can take you places. Not their faith. Not what is prevailing in the nation. But your faith has made you all. Go in peace. And then the Bible goes on to say the next verse. Verses 49. That while he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house. Saying to him, Thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. Let me read that to you again. Verses 49 of Luke oh. chapter 8. Luke While he yet spake these words, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house. And saying to him, they're talking about Jairus. Thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the mass. When Jairus left the house, the daughter was about to die. And when he left, he told his household that I'm going to see Jesus. And I'm going to make sure that I bring Jesus to my house to heal my daughter. So everybody had no problem with that. Everyone in the house was said, okay, Jairus, we are believing God with you. We know Jesus is coming. And we know the daughter will be well. We know that a miracle is going to happen in this place. And I can see everybody say, Jairus, we are with you. We are standing in faith. Glory be to the Lord. And I know Jesus will come. And when Jesus comes, we will see a miracle in this house. And so Jairus went in this faith. And in his words, according to the book of Matthew, he said to Jesus, Matthew chapter 9, he said to Jesus, my daughter is dead now. But I want you to come and lay your hand up upon her and she shall live again. So that's the faith Jairus came with when he came to Jesus. And so here is Jairus and Jesus. They are going to Jairus' house. And a servant comes and says, Jesus. No, sorry, he didn't speak to Jesus. He spoke to Jairus. He said, Jairus, I want you to know no reason to bring Jesus to our house anymore. Because I want you to know that the daughter right now is dead. Is dead. She is gone. And in the servant is worse. Trouble not the master. Let me say those words again. Jairus, don't trouble the master. Don't trouble the master. Because when you bring Jesus to the house, the girl will not be raised from the dead. Because the only thing we know about Jesus is that Jesus heals. But Jesus does not raise the dead. So trouble not the master. Trouble not the master. You will be troubling him to bring him to the house. To raise your daughter. Yes, if it was 
sickness as it was before. That is okay by us. Yes, we will have the faith that she will be healed. But for you to bring Jesus to the house when the daughter is dead, that will be troubling Jesus. I want you to know there is nothing in this world that can trouble Jesus. In fact, Jesus came to trouble all your troubles. Let me say it again. Jesus came to trouble every trouble you have. Let me say it again. Jesus came on this earth to trouble according to the letter of John chapter 3, verse John. Verses 8, the Bible says, For the Son of God came to destroy the works of God. Darkness. Or to destroy the works of Satan. And so Jesus cannot be troubled by your troubles. You've got to come to a place of believing. That if I have troubles, Jesus can trouble them. Yes, I will be And deal with all my troubles. So there's trouble at home. But the man thinks that Jesus doesn't have the grace to deal with the trouble of death. But he has the grace to deal with the trouble of sickness. But I want you to know, beloved, that Jesus has the grace and the power to trouble sickness and get it out of your body to trouble death and get it out of your soul. Let me say it again. Jesus has the grace and the power to trouble sickness and get it out of your body to trouble death and get it out of your soul. Let me say it again. Jesus has the grace and the power to trouble sickness and get it out of your soul. COVID-19 COVID and get out kanya. of your nation to trouble Satan and get stani. him out of your house to trouble every headache that is troubling you. Jesus came for that reason yes, to trouble every trouble that is troubling you. So the man said, don't trouble the master. Because by now, it is a waste for him to come. Developing a great faith number one requires to have a divine perspective about Jesus. You got to look at Jesus the way God sees Jesus. When God looks at Jesus, He sees Jesus as a sacrifice for you. When God looks at Jesus, He sees Jesus as a Lamb of God that was slain from the very foundations of the world for you. When God looks at Jesus, He sees Jesus as a Savior to you from every sickness and every disease for you. When God gave the name Jesus to his mother and to his father, he says you shall call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. And we know through sin came all kinds of death. And so when God looks at Jesus, he sees Jesus as the only way to him for you. He sees Jesus as the only remedy out of your sickness and diseases for you. When God looks at Jesus, he sees Jesus as a mediator between you and him. 
When God looks at Jesus, he sees Jesus as the only way for you to him. A divine perspective is very crucial for you to have a great faith. And the way you see Jesus, that's what determines what kind of faith you will have and what kind of a miracle you will receive. When Jesus was baptized, when John the Baptist baptized Jesus, the Bible says, that the heavens opened and the spirit of God descended on Jesus like a dove. And God the Father spoke these words. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Now when you read the Bible and you that's the way God sees Jesus. And your perspective of who Jesus is and what Jesus can do will determine how faith and what faith and how great faith you have and works for you. Divine perspective of Jesus is very key. For some people, they fail to receive their miracles because they saw Jesus or they see Jesus as another prophet. The Muslim community looks at Jesus and they see another prophet. And because they see Jesus as another prophet, their faith cannot connect with God's grace for the miracles. Other people look at Jesus and they saw Jesus as an historical Jesus. Jesus of the past. Yes, so we Other people look at Jesus and they see a deceiver. They see simply a mortal man. They see simply somebody who can't do much. When Jesus came and visited the town where he was raised and when he began to preach in the book of Mark chapter 6 they say these words he's known, he's known this Jesus the carpenter the son of Mary and so their faith and their perspective about Jesus was at the level of a carpenter and so when we read in the scriptures we get to see the servant of Jairus saying to Jairus trouble not the master because the daughter is dead Yes, Jesus would heal the daughter if she was sick. But Jesus cannot raise that daughter when she is dead. That was his perspective. But today, if you change your perspective, then you begin to see Jesus as a mighty healer. As a mighty healer, healing will begin to flow. If you change your perspective, Change your perspective and you see Jesus as a miracle worker. Miracles will happen to you. If you begin to see Jesus as the raiser from the dead, you will be raised from the dead. If you see Jesus as one who has power and authority over, over nature, Power will flow to you. Great faith begins for you when you begin to have divine perspective of Jesus. Or when you begin to see Jesus as God sees him. Divine perspective.
Yes, Part one. And you will continue along those lines. Because your perspective about Jesus determines the level of your faith. The level of your faith. Remember the words we began with. When Jesus looked at this woman and said, daughter, your faith your faith has made you whole. Perspective. Because for as she said, within herself, if I may touch the hem of Jesus' garment, she had the faith that Jesus has power even in his clothing. She believed that everything about Jesus can transmit power. Divine perspective. If you want a miracle from Jesus, simply change your perspective. Perspective is everything in life, but also is everything in faith. Do you want to be Simply change the perspective too that Jesus is a healer. Do you want a door to be open for you? Change your perspective to Jesus as a door. Perspective. But let me qualify that. Divine perspective. What is divine perspective? The way God sees Jesus. And that's the way you should see Jesus. May God bless you with those words. As you change your perspective. To begin developing great faith. Now, let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much that when we read in the scriptures from Genesis to the book of Revelation, you keep helping humanity to develop divine Perspective. We thank you that all these scriptures we are written for us to have a certain perspective which is divine perspective. And so, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will touch minds today. I pray that you touch spirits today. That these men and women that are hearing me and watching me by video, by WhatsApp, wherever they are watching, will be touched by the Holy Spirit that their perspective will begin to change. That their way of see, their way of vision will change. So that their faith will become great. So that their faith will touch your heart. And I pray for the quickening of the Holy Spirit in their hearts and their minds. I pray for the quickening of the Holy Spirit in their souls in the name of Jesus. And right now as they believe you, I release grace and I release divine healing. And I release miracles. And I release the power of God to touch them from their heads up the soles of their feet. Let miracles happen let there be a harvest of miracles in their lives. I decree and I declare that it's happening now in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Amen, amen and amen. amen. God bless you. I know and I believe that things are changing for you. And God is raising you up. 
And mighty things are happening in your life. And I always encourage you that do the best you can to not be a era of the world. But to be a doer of the word. Practice what we have learned today. And the power of God will come to your home. Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to give you an opportunity Kat to receive a blessing. The Bible tells me well, and you Bible that it's more blessed to give than to receive. The Bible tells me to bring my tithe and your tithe and your offering in the house of the Lord. And as we do, God Almighty that faithful God promised that he will open the windows of heaven and he will pour out upon you a blessing that there will not be room enough for you to receive it. May God honor that word for you. May God bless you. May God do mighty things for you. May God rebuke that devourer for your sake. May your life rise above every challenge in Jesus' name. Now the numbers to give are on the screen. And if you can come to our office, please do so. But give. 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 And God will give you. And when God gives back to you, He will give you good measure, press down, shaken together, running over. In the name of Jesus. Now, one more thing. And this is a very special announcement. God has given us a good and a great opportunity for us to really, really be blessed. He has opened an opportunity for you and for me and for this church by availing to us a piece of land over an acre and we have a deadline by the 31st of this month to be able to pay 25 million so find a way of how you can participate so that a great blessing can come to you the numbers are on the screen. Contact us. Send us an email. We would like to hear from you. We love you. God bless you. Until we meet again. Remember. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7 says we walk by faith and not by sight. God bless you. We love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.